Sensory Spaces is a series we started in February 2013. It's a way uh, for our museum to get closer in contact with the production of uh, the artist. So to follow from uh, zero to, to the final outcome, uh, the, the whole process. Artists who are experiencing with the public sector and, uh, and therefore we as a museum are, are keen to offer the first institutional show to this artist. What um, is presented here for Sensory Spaces uh, number six is uh, her largest uh, sculpture project so far. My father's father was from Rotterdam. I never knew him. He died before I was born. But I've always been interested in the city as this place of um, passage for him and many other people that came to America in the early 20th century. My grandmother was from uh, Copenhagen, so she passed through here as well on her way. Coming to Rotterdam for the first time this summer to see the space and to get a sense of the city, I was very drawn to the water and the idea of this being a port city. And with that, the sense of passage and change and um, movement and stasis and distance and time that is inherent within the atmosphere here, but surrounding a sort of larger idea of the sea and water. Highly personal translation of uh, not of the city itself, but the flavor or the sound of the city which is perceived. Some elements are blown up details of moments Sarah found throughout the city. Some other elements play more with a metaphorical uh, idea. Simultaneous to this process of learning about Rotterdam and working on this project, I've been studying um, closely the work of E.E. E. Cummings, a modernist poet, very interested in the way that he has structured his poems, but also his continual returning to certain subjects like the sea. The sea was a, a, a subject he returned to often, as well as the moon. And those are two um, subjects that appear within several of the works within the exhibition. In the center of the room is a, in my mind, a, a distilled and abstracted interpretation of the sea, rendered with these polished aluminum plates resting on uh, stained wooden beams that were actually inspired by an example of the Reitfeld chair I saw here in the museum. It's meant to emulate mirrors because mirrors to me are also important as um, a reoccurring material and object that I've used in my work previously and in this installation because I connect it very much to photography. And my camera is still a mechanical camera, so the mirror is what I use to actually create the composition in a way, so sort of the way that a mirror captures and balances the image within a camera. There was a total eclipse in 1979 it was documented extensively in the press, but these images come from my family archive and were captured using a camera obscura technique. The image fell upon a cardboard on the floor and they photographed it from above and then I re-photographed those photographs. The layering of the images to me is, is like a collaging in a way, but on different planes. They're mounted on glass, so they're um, within the frame they're at actually different levels. While walking around uh, Rotterdam, I came upon a smaller, more historic harbor, and there was an object wrapped in canvas, and it was quite fascinating to me because it took on this very interesting, mysterious quality. And I photographed rolls and rolls of film of it. The actual object was quite large. It was taller than me. So I've reprinted them at the scale that I felt I was experiencing the form when I was capturing it. I refer to them as sky cloths because they're sort of speaking to the way that sky changes throughout the day. 
and depending on the light, the fabric that it's printed on becomes more or less transparent. Something else that I was really struck by here when going around the port was just how you would have these different arrangements of objects sitting ready you know, to be shipped and things like that. So um, I wanted to think a lot about the floor and then also um, verticality because I think what's also interesting is the sense of there's the expanse of um, the horizon and uh, the things being laid out on the decks of the ports, but there's also the sense of things rising up from the ground and the continual sense of building and movement and change this way as well. Some of the other things I was thinking about with some of the sculptures is um, modernist design, but also the zero movement, contemporary architectural details. But I do think that I, I try, the, the shapes are quite primary and simple. The forms are all quite simple, so that there is this sense of openness for interpretation. The viewer can bring things that maybe I never determined were there, and that it's not an overly didactic or um, uh, oppressive sense of uh, you know, conveying a very particular idea. And I like how you can have at the same time while entering the, in this room. Everything sounds still and suspended, but at the same time it activates when you, once you move around this room. These uh, modular elements become um, your part of an orbital system, which uh, which uh, in a way as a visitor you understand you are in the center of it.